right, well today we have my daily F80 M3 back in the shop and we are finally taking this thing to the next level in terms of performance. I drive this car all the time. We take it up to the tail of the dragon, take it to the track and we're finally kind of at the limits of the current setup and I've waited and waited to take this step but we're finally taking the step. This thing's getting a full revamp and it's probably gonna be a little bit more track car than daily after this but I've, just, I've made my peace with that. I'm totally okay with it. I'm really excited to see how this thing performs. So we've got a whole bunch of upgrades for it that we're gonna put on, and then we're gonna take it up to the tail of the dragon to absolutely thrash it and see how everything holds up. So this should be a good all-in-one video. I'm looking forward to it. So before I jibber jabber your ear off, let's get to work. Let's get this thing lifted up, start tearing it apart, and uh, I'll explain what we're doing. So the first area we're gonna tackle is grip. We do not have enough of it with the current setup. We are finally ditching the stock 20s with rubber band tires and going to a more race wheel setup. Now, I've wanted to do this from the start. You know, the inner tuner, modder in me wanted to do this from the very beginning, but I resisted for as long as I could. But we finally got into the point where we are driving at the limit of the tires. The last trip I did to the Dragon, my buddy Chelsea came with his turbo Porsche and he had T's and some sticky tires. And man, it was really tough to keep up with them. And by doing so, I just absolutely wrecked my tires. The stock tires just fall apart when you start putting a lot of load and heat into them. So we're finally going with a more appropriate wheel setup for what we like to do with this car. And we have a set of 18 by 10 and a half square Volt TE37s and some 275 NT01s ones to go all the way around. This is my absolute favorite tire ever. I run this tire on everything. I've got it all around on my LS Miata up there, front and rear. I've got them on the front of the vet here, the front of the Drift M3. I love these tires. They're like Frank's Red Hot to me. I put them on everything I can and I've wanted to from the start and it's finally time. So for wheels, TE37, this is a bucket list wheel. I've wanted these wheels since I was in high school. Literally looking at magazines, looking at Speed Hunters articles of cars with TEs. I've dreamed of having a set of my own and it's finally time this was the perfect car to uh, put these wheels on. So I got these from Fitment Industries. Definitely highly recommend them. They have become my go-to for buying wheels because their website is incredibly well set up. There's so many different options. It's really hard to find a specific wheel for a specific car, but with their website, say for this truck, I need wheels for it. I wanna look up wheels. I can look for specifically this lug pattern, the right sizes, the right offset, the right everything, find every wheel available that meets those parameters and see if it's actually in stock or not. There's nothing that bugs me more than websites that lead you to believe stuff is in stock and then you order it and you find out two weeks later that it's a six month lead time to get it and things like that. So. I've become a big fan of Fitment Industries. I use them for everything. They do also offer a mountain balance service, which I was gonna do for these wheels because I don't wanna be the one, I don't wanna scratch them. These are my, my dream wheels. I, I don't wanna risk scratching them. However, I already had the tires, so I decided to do it myself. So this is gonna be a pretty nerve wracking moment <laughs> putting tires on these wheels, but it's gonna be worth it because we're finally gonna get to see what some TEs look like on this thing and the grip change is gonna be nuts. These tires probably have twice the grip of the tires we're used to running, so this is gonna be a big improvement. Let's get these unboxed and uh, get them mounted. And whoo, look at those gleaming with the shop light. Let's see if I can pick these up with one hand because they are very light. I just gotta get a good, a good angle to easy, grab it. Risking it. I can't, I gotta just do it this way. So I've got to be honest, as much as I am excited about these wheels, I was dreading this moment. It is up to me to put this finishing touch on and I'm not much of a sticker guy. I don't have a great eye for if things are even and, and all of that stuff. It's just not my forte, it's not my specialty. So I was dreading this. So the first wheel, I really took my time to try to make sure I got everything in the right place because we're gonna to need to match every other wheel after this. But with the first wheel done, just the excitement of seeing it, 
finished up with the stickers makes all the difference. So the rest of the wheels went pretty easy. Once I had an idea of where the stickers needed to go and what the gaps kind of looked like top and back of the stickers, it was pretty straightforward to put the rest of them on and start getting ready to mount these things, which is going to be the next most nerve wracking process. I got to try real hard not to mess it up. All right, we got all of the stickers on. They really just complete the look of the wheel. It's not a TE without some different colored spoke and the gray with the red is going to go so well on the white with the red interior i'm pumped so i am going to go ahead and start mounting tires on these no scratches so oh well, sway's going to start working on removing the lip kit so we have an oem lip kit uh this front lip was already kind of broken and then someone kicked up a sign in front of me and i ran it over on the way home from the dragon last time uh so the front lip's destroyed it's Somehow still hanging on there. I had to zip tie it up just to make it home. Um, so we're replacing that. The side skirts, this one's good. The other one's damaged. And the rear splitter has a little bit of damage, um, but also is missing side pieces. Since we need to replace the, all of the lip kit anyway, we decided to go a little bit more aggressive. So that's what we have here is the more aggressive, super aggressive lip kit. So the combination of these two things aesthetically, it should make a pretty massive difference. So while I'm mountain tires, so Sway's gonna start working on getting all our broken junk off. I'll let you get to it. Let's get it. So one thing with the, these cars, my Drift F80 and the Daily F80 now, as I modify them, I'm trying to retain a lot of the OEM functions. So instead of using the cool aluminum valve stem that comes with these wheels, we're using these aftermarket TPMS sensor valve cores. And the reason for that is because we want to retain that feature. It's a really nice feature to have to see what your tire pressures are. And on this car, we actually can see tire temp as well. So it's definitely something I want to retain and it's kind of satisfying to do it this way. You know, it's easy to kind of turn something into a race car and just kind of delete all that stuff but to try to retain all of that with aftermarket wheels and tires and keep all that functionality I don't know it's something I enjoy so we use those tire pressure monitoring sensors luckily Fitment Industries reminded me of those and sent them and got all the tires mounted and we're ready to roll all right all of our tires are mounted such a meaty combo look at how wide those are and this is only at 275 these tires run a little big, so they look beefy no matter what combo you do. Uh, but full square, 10 and a half. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Seeing them with the tires on and the stickers, just a whole nother level of cool. Wow, can't wait to see them on the car. Um, so we've got the lips off. Let's see. Oh, that was an OEM lip too, which is like $2,500. Was. Was. And then the little baby diffuser. So before we do this though, there's something I'm really excited to try. So my biggest gripe with the F80 and the way it feels has always been the paddles. It feels like a video, it, it feels worse than my sim wheel. My sim wheel has a much crisper, much nicer feeling paddle than the car. And it, it's like, I don't know, there's just such a disconnect. So these are like, these are called mag, mag paddles, magnetic paddles. So they've got a way crisper, nice solid, Oh, oh, so I'm real excited about these. I think these are gonna make a huge difference in feel. Oh, they come with smaller thingies. Oh, different paddles. I did not know that. Features. Got some screws. So I wanna make sure that these can go on without too much trouble. Oh, this is gonna be... I think I'll stick with the big ones for now. <laughs> oh, man. That's gonna make, because when we're in, up in the Dragon, I mean, you'll see when we go there later in this video, you're shifting a lot, second, third, second, third, fourth, you know, so it's just one of those things that's always bugged me that it's never felt nice. It's always felt just kind of like lame. Uh, so, damn, what a like. Actually hear the click. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. So let's try to get those on. Drop her down. So in comparison, so we decided to just pull the wheel off to do this process. In hindsight, we could have done it with the wheel on the car, but we learned when we swapped the wheel on the other F80, this is one nice thing about having two cars, two projects, is you learn from one, you get to use it on the other, but the, the wheels come off very easy. So Josue got to work on swapping the paddles out. All right, so stock paddle, mag paddle. Stock. <laughs> Literally like a video game controller. 
<laughs> Once I was done playing with both off the steering wheel, it was time to get the new ones on the steering wheel so we could see what they feel like. As I've said, this is one of my biggest gripes with this car. A lot of people say that these cars are numb and they're soulless, but I really love the way these cars drive, but that is one of the things that really kind of ruins that experience. All right, moment of truth. Oh, 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 oh dude, it's gonna be so sick. It sounds very crisp. Dude, it, it feels, I might have touched it first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Dude, it feels, it feels good. I like this size too. I feel like this will help when you're kind of like, mm. I mean, in theory, your hand should always be here. Yeah, I don't like, if it feels too, you know, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you bring, bring the paddle, bring the paddle. True, anything. true, we'll bring them. Oh, dude. <laughs> It's the little things. That's a lesson that I've learned throughout working on cars that like, the little things sometimes make the biggest differences. Can we move the battery back up? Yeah. Makes me anxious. Thingy back in. Like nothing ever happened. Oh, 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 gotta fix the cargo net. Your cargo nets are white. We also have a new spoiler, but I don't know how involved it's going to be to remove this one. We'll get to that tomorrow. Good progress today. Tires are mounted. Paddles are on. So tomorrow we will put the whip kit on, put the wheels on, drop her down, see what she looks like. We do need to do an alignment before this trip. Pretty sure I just killed my last set of tires because we were pushing on junk, freaking rock solid tires. Uh, but just in case, we got more to do. See you in the morning. Time to move on to the aesthetics again. Well, and performance, the wheels. Before we put the wheels on though, I wanna get the lips on. So let's get these uh, unboxed. I'll show you what we're working with. We're going a lot more aggressive than we did before. <laughs> oh, true. I haven't done the snap in forever. All right, we're gonna do the snap. All right, if you've been watching a long time, you may remember this. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to get this done. We're trying to get this done and then head out to the Dragon. So we're gonna do the old snap trick to unbox these. Oh, that was weak, hold on. All right, so we've got all new carbon everything. <laughs> Side splitters, front lip, rear diffuser setup, and rear spoiler. So all of this stuff is much more aggressive than the stuff we have on. The stuff we have on is OEM, you know, slightly upgraded, you know, so they're a little bit more aggressive and these cars absolutely need whips. They look like garbage without whips. So yeah, it looks like a three series without whips. So this is all just like very, very mild stuff that we had on here, but it's, it's basically all the most aggressive ones. So yeah, now let's get these installed so we can put the wheels on so we can uh, kick the tires, light the fires and uh, make sure this thing still works and is ready to go to the Dragon so we can get packed up and head out. Let's go. When it comes to stuff like this, it's never gonna fit absolutely perfect, but fortunately these are starting off fitting pretty decent. Not, not too bad. We gotta do a little massaging, a little bit of moving. I mean, my front bumper is not in perfect condition anyway, and we're able to get this thing on with little to no gaps. So we're using double-sided tape and screws, double fastening them. That's something with any sort of body panel, I try to attach them as well as I possibly can, because as long as you buy reasonable quality stuff, if you hit something if it scrapes if you go over a speed bump it's probably going to stay together it might wear it out it might crack it it might do something like that but as long as it's attached well to the car it shouldn't come off and you know i don't i don't want pieces of the car flying off so we're trying to attach these as well as we possibly can and make sure that we're not going to have to worry about them coming off because when we go up to the dragon we tackle some really gnarly bumpy rough roads there's it, it's hard driving and all of these are going to scrape the ground at some point they need to be well attached otherwise they're, they're just going to fly off immediately so the side skirts went on nice they fit the best out of all three pieces the front lip fit all right and the rear diffuser didn't fit perfect but again did a little massaging got it to fit in a way that we're happy with it it doesn't have to be perfect i'm not a big uh things need to be absolutely perfect kind of guy because i like not having to worry about scraping them or dinging them or someone kicking them with their foot you know all those things so 
once the lift goes on, we could finally install the wheels. I mean, this is the big moment. This is the moment of truth. I have wanted TE37s on something, anything, since I was in high school. Literally daydreamed about these wheels, and we are finally putting on, on not just any car, but really the best car I own. This car does everything well. I love it. I use it probably the most, so it deserves it. Sheesh. Ride height solid though. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, look at this thing. It's the first time I got a real look at it. It was just oh my lord. Wow. <laughs> Dude. I was a little worried the 18s would be a touch small looking on it, but absolute money in the bank. And I was worried that the 275 35 would be too small sidewall, but those NTO1s are thick. So it is, oh my gosh, dude. No, 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 I'm just like, hey. Oh, oof, that's a rig. I, I, you said you like rigs. Sheesh, dude. That's a rig. Man, with the whips and every oh my god, that is it, boy. Oh my god, <laughs> it looks so good. Oh, and I forgot about the rear diffuser. Oh, definitely needs the rear spoiler. Might not have time this trip, but definitely needs it. I mean, we'll have to get it outside, get a real good look at it. But I am pumped. That looks so good, dude. This with the mag paddles, it's the little things. I mean, wheels aren't a little thing, but jeez. Daily Ripper. This is, yes, adult mobile. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, I guess some would say it's not. Um, right, right, but um, I'm okay with that. So I debated this for a long time. I really considered wheels for a long time and I was like, nah, I'm gonna keep the stocks. You know, we weren't pushing it that hard, but at the track, I absolutely destroyed my tires because you can really push. But even at the Dragon, we've just been, we've been pushing more and more each trip while keeping kind of within the same margin you know driving seven eight tenths you, you don't want to go ten tenths there because if you do you if if you ever race if you haven't ever raced on any motorsports you might not know this but it doesn't matter how good of a driver you are you think you are you can and will make a mistake so if you're driving at the limit and you make a mistake there it's not not going to go well for you but we've been driving harder and harder and the stock tires were my limiting factor ben had pilot sports you know chelsea had nto 5s and I thought about this for a while, and it's finally time we're gonna have all the grip. I mean, this is gonna be a total night and day difference from the grip we had before. And the reason I went with 10 and a half square, 275 square, is, you know, we're not just straight, we're not straight lining this car. We want it to be a neutral balance around the corners. The other nice thing is if I get one wheel as a spare with the same tire on it, it'll fit on all four corners. So anyway, jabber jabber, we're gonna tidy up. Uh, we need to switch. We've got no spacer on this side, and it's a little bit sunk. But then we've got a 10 on this side, and it looks like it's going to rub. So I'm going to see if I have a 5 line around somewhere and throw a 5 on both sides, and it should be perfect. But just look at that stance. I just love meaty tire setups. That's my thing. Meaty tires are the way. I can't, oh my God, it's perfect. A1, dude, A1. I like it, it's meaty, but it's still low pro. It's, the wheels are smaller, but they don't look too small. It looks right, it looks track spec, which I like track spec. Dude, I am so beyond stoked on this right now. This was the right choice. Oh man, well I guess it's time to take it for a little test drive. See what's what. Try out the new paddles too.
it too much because we're going to do plenty of ripping at the drag and test it out. I just want to make sure it's all good. We don't have any crazy rubs. We're in a little rub in the front when we hit the bump. we got a pretty good bump coming up. So just to clarify, we're not going to use these wheels as daily wheels and only use the TEs when we're going to rip on the car just for this trip in particular. So I got a flat the last trip I did. The inside's cord on the, the Blow Pro 20s. And then Ben went on his own like a month ago. His corded, he got a flat and it was a whole nightmare to fix. It's hard to find those size tires. So we wanted to bring spares anyway. So I'm just going to bring them on the car and change them so I don't put extra wear and tear, you know, a thousand miles of it just driving on the highway on the, uh, the sticky boys. But once we get back, they'll stay on the car just for the drive up there. It's easier to drive it on these and fit those in the back. Plus I have something really cool for them that I got for the other car for when I put wheels in it to take it to the track uh, and they, they match. All right, so these are our wheel bags. So like I said, I got these for the other car because I generally bring four wheels in the back seat um, and I'm always using moving blankets, but these, keep them covered, keeps the interior of the car clean and protects the wheel. So that's why I decided to bring these in the car versus bringing those in the car. So these fit nicely and these are raised wheel covers, which is what these wheels are. So it's pretty freaking, pretty dang hot boy. <laughs> if I do say we're moving up in the world, <laughs> got covered wheels. Who does that? Color combo, red and blue BMW again. True, I do wish these were red. It would be way cooler, yeah. but we'll I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. So we went ahead and got the car fully packed up. Luckily we had the experience from packing the Drift F80 with four wheels and spare parts and tools and all the things we need. So we had a pretty good idea of how to Tetris this thing to make sure we could fit all of the stuff that we need, parts and tools and wheels and tires, as well as our luggage. So once that was done, I did the tidying up. I went ahead and got everything finished up, the wheels torqued down, the oil changed, tried to be as prepared as we possibly can for this trip. We want a nice smooth trip, no interruptions. All right, well, everything is loaded. See our wheels here. Everything but our luggage, our bags of clothes and stuff. Uh, tool bag, some more tools, spare parts, oil, <laughs> coolant. I normally never bring this much stuff, but uh, after us both having those tire issues the last two trips, I want to be prepared. We got stuff to do in alignment. If uh, it seems like the tires are wearing funny, we got spare control arms <laughs> uh, going all out. This thing is dumped right now <laughs> with all those wheels in it and everything. So we headed out bright and early in the morning, made our first fuel stop and got ready for a long journey ahead of us. It's a long enough drive to where if you don't leave early, you're gonna get there late. You're gonna get there late into the night. 
as we headed through Okawa, we saw a bunch of Jeeps. There was there must have been some massive Jeep thing going on. I mean, we saw hundreds of Jeeps cruising down the road, at parking lots, down trails, everywhere. But uh, once we got through there, we met up with Ben at the rest stop, made our obligatory Bucky stop. It's a good halfway point on the drive up, and then decided to take the back way. There's kind of two routes we can take. We can either go straight through downtown Atlanta, which obviously you got to deal with traffic and it's more just boring highway, or we can take this back way and go through some small towns, go through Athens. It's uh, it's a neat little drive, and at the very end of it has a really nice section of road i mean comparable to the dragon so we like to take this way if we can if we're uh if we're doing all right on time so as we made our way closer the weather started to take a turn and this is something we were worried about going into this weekend the forecast was not looking great and they can change in an instant so we're still holding out hope but the last bit of the drive as we got into the uh to mountain country it was pretty rainy it was pretty gross but we kept cruising we made our way up and into franklin so this is a small town that you go through on the way we happened to pass by while a high school football game was going on, which was uh, pretty neat to see, Friday Night Lights, as we come in on a Friday evening. And eventually we made our way up to the Airbnb and were greeted the next morning by this incredible view. This is a great time of year to come because the leaves are all changing and really you couldn't ask for much more, but we're going to rip. And that's what we're really here for. Start fresh. <laughs> All right, well, we made it. So we're at this Airbnb that we stayed at a while ago, about a year ago now. Um, it's a really, really nice setup. It's got a porch up top, porch down here, and uh, it is way up here. The driveway is a bit intimidating, pretty gnarly driveway, but what you get for that driveway is this view. Very, very nice view. We are way up here at the top of a mountain. So it's not supposed to rain today, but it has been overcast and rainy. So I'm just hoping the roads dry up. If we can just get one, one dry day in with this car, I'd be really happy. Um, but we got the tees back on, drove up here great. Then we get to feel it with the sticky boys. You ready, host Juanito? All right. <laughs>
So after ripping some back roads on the way to the dragon, we had made it up to the dragon itself. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what the dragon is, it's a super twisty stretch of road between North Carolina and Tennessee. You pretty much cross into Tennessee immediately, but it's 318 turns and 11 miles. So it's very twisty, very technical. I really enjoy it. And uh, so do a lot of other people. You got the tree of shame from all the wrecks and you can come up here on pretty much any weekend during the season and you are going to see a ton of of everything I mean from Harleys to sport bikes to straight up race bikes with a flashlight zip tied to the front end to cars like us there's always a collection there's always people ripping up and down it's a really neat place get sit you sit you go sit <laughs> go sit next to the dragon I'll take a picture all right, we're at the Dragon base. So this is Steel's Guy Motorcycle Resort across the street. You have Killboy. That's usually where the cars congregate. This is more of like the motorcycles, Harleys, um, but th but both end up in both places. Um, but this is the base of the Dragon for those that don't know. So we're gonna rip up this road here and uh, 13 miles, something like that. The clouds aren't looking great. So we should probably get a move on it. Uh, but the NTL ones with uh, reasonably dry, just patchy pavement. Oh my goodness. About everything I could hope. A lot more grip, a lot more confidence. All right, go. took itself out on the camera mount so luckily it was the passenger side one so we pulled it off we got one wiper until we can get to the parts store we got a wiper blade we're about as far as we could be from a parts store we get at least an hour that way maybe two or some amount of distance that way not really sure how much though so we decided to take the long way the known way journey back through the dragon now that it should be dried up a bit and make our way to franklin because there's a pretty sweet road on the way there too so two birds one stone Sent me with the wheels, valve stems with TPM 
EMS sensors in them. I was thinking I was just gonna reuse my stock ones, but uh, we're in a parade right now, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it's cool to see all the modified cars, but we've got all these modified cars in front of us and nobody wants to yield. Uh, so we're just putt putt. But I didn't, I thought I was gonna be able to use my stock ones, but it's a different valve hole. So it was really cool that they knew that I needed those and that those would work. And I didn't have to do anything. I just did a TPMS reset and they popped up like stock and it's really nice because you can see how hard you're pushing it because of the tire temps and it's really how hard you're braking because the brakes get hot and then the brakes that heat goes into the wheel which then goes into the tire um so it's really cool to have like i think it's so cool that a factory car has a tire pressure and tire temp it's so nice to be able to see like they pulled down a lot we had them up to 165 on the run through now we're down to 130s in the front and you know 110, 120 in the rear. Car feels great though on the NTO ones. Like dry man, it's wild the difference. Because Ben's always had pretty much since maybe the first trip that I came or the second trip at least. He's always had like upgraded tires on the stock wheels. Like he's had 200 Trekmar tires. I always had the, the stock Michelin Super Sports or whatever they were. Um, so for me, it's a dramatic difference. I can actually get on throttle coming out of a turn early and not just dance around. I even turned the manual drive mode off for full traction control off. I used to leave it on just because the tires wouldn't hook. We're coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Yeah, we're coming back down to the base right now. I think we're going to continue on and head to Franklin. Go, go. Oh, oh now we're going through. Got to be quicker than that. So many cars, so many different cars, not just cars. Thank you. Yeah, there's a big variety. Motorcycles, of course. <laughs> All right. So after a quick stop at the base of the Dragon to hang out, check out some of the cars, we headed back towards Franklin. So we're going to be going down Hellbender and then 28 up to Franklin. It's a, it's a great drive all the way around. Hellbender is a little bit faster paced of a road and it's dry. So I get to actually start feeling what these NTO ones can do. blades kind of worked they gave us we got two different ones ben got the same two his were right so anyway we got some bosch ones i think these are what we need finally all right wiper blades changed center caps missing unfortunately both of our center caps fell out in the front wheels 
getting them too hot. Car is disgusting. So we're gonna hit this car wash. It's right over there. Ben's already in there. Get one without us. Oh, when? Yeah. You're not gonna get that side, buddy? Oh, he's doubling up on the back. I paid for the works, buddy. I'm gonna tell your boss. Get to work. It's supposed to be the works. There we go. There we go. Woo! <laughs> so exciting. It's dark now. It's dark. I think we can pull out now, right? <laughs> Stop! Stop! It's over! Stop! Um. Oh no! It's gonna do it again. Oh no! I'm still dry. I'm still standing up. I don't. I, I oh, here it goes! Here. Oh shit! Oh! <laughs> All right. I think. Are you good. done? Finally. Let me off. Jeez, dude. No! Not again! Please tell me that's the air. What is that? Why is it still spraying us? Got the dogs. Somebody got the dogs. Idiot. Oh, that's air, I think. Wow. Lesson learned. Don't go th the first time I've been through a car wash Dad, in I years. Was excited for the car wash. Same, same. I did not see that coming. I've seen that leak a tiny bit before, but never like that. I gotta figure that out. Yeah. Bump that up on the Right. So after we got some fresh wipers and got the car washed, we headed out of Franklin down 28 back to Robbinsville. This is a really good route if you're up in the area and the dragon's busy. Uh, Franklin's a cool town, they've got a bunch of stuff and then also this road is really, really enjoyable. You know, there's some more open boring sections but there's some really good just back to back twisty sections. Uh, I like this road a lot. So for some reason, no matter what you do, no matter how you film it, it never looks fast in video. It looks like we are just putt putting through but i promise you we are not we are ripping and it is fun um and it's a perfect time look at all these leaves so we're gonna do some ripping and then we're gonna go explore some uh some new stuff really put this thing to the test So 
So we went back out to do a night run. The night runs are cool because there's very little traffic and the headlights on these cars are pretty good. Ben's car is better than mine because my car has some headlight malfunctions that I need to sort out still, but it, it it's fun, except for the fact that it started raining right before we left and did not stop raining. And that was pretty much the theme of the rest of the trip for us. It was pretty much wet the whole time. The irony of bringing sticky tires finally and it being wet, but we did get one good rip in with it being wet. Uh, this road in particular is pretty coarse, so it's still got some decent grip in the wet. So we ripped around mostly in the wet and then it was time to finally hit the road and head home. We decided to take the highway this time and cruise through Atlanta. It's a little bit quicker as long as there's not a ton of traffic, but uh, that is the end of our trip. That is the end of this saga. The car did phenomenally well. You know, we've been chipping away at this thing, just adding little upgrades here and there, which is something I didn't really think I'd ever enjoy, uh, but it's, it's fun. It's rewarding. It's enjoyable. And I'm really happy with where the car is at. I wish we got more dry driving in with the NTO ones, but uh, you know, hey, that's a good excuse to come back for next time. We're heading home. We made it back to Florida with the car in one piece. Can't ask for much more. Stateside. Stateside.